Hi everyone. So I've just made this video to tell you about my new group and look at some of the questions that I've been asked on the group. So as I mentioned in one of my last videos, I had my um, book of the face variety uh, page shut down and there were just over 40,000, about 42,000 uh, people on there and it was a really nice space and um, if I needed any questions I would go to that page and I would always see lots of questions there that I could look at and speak to the nine about and um, all sorts of interesting posts so it's really uh, upsetting that that was shut down however I, I, I'm not surprised and I was prepared that my book of the face variety um, profiles might go because it's happened to friends of mine and other people who were posting similar things so I, I wasn't surprised trying to preserve the platforms as much as possible but I'm aware that that may not be the case uh, but I thought well I'll give it one more try so um, I opened up a new page tried to start a new page but it wouldn't let me and I, I made five attempts with different names and just would not let me, it just kept saying, you are um, restricted from doing this, so you're blocked from doing this. So I thought, oh, okay. And then I thought, oh, what about a group? And I've never really wanted to make a group because there's so much work <laughs> as I'm finding out. But I thought, well, I will, and I'll give it a try. And so I made a group and it allowed me, Facebook let me do the group. So I made a group um, a couple of days ago, I think three days ago now, and it is work, but only in the sense that I need to uh, moderate the group just to make sure. So I'm, I'm not just watching my own uh, posts and my own um, words. I'm having to make sure that everyone else is also speaking in the coded form, otherwise, We'll lose this one as well. And I understand that that may be the case. So anyway, for all of those uh, who are listening, who were following me on my uh, page on Book of the Face Variety, I now have a group and it is called, <laughs> surprisingly, Magenta Pixie and the White Winged Collective Consciousness of Nine. It's a public group at the moment. I may possibly change that to uh, private, as I as a few people have suggested, I should do, but I haven't done that at the moment. So, if you are on Book of the Face Variety, you can find me on that group, Magenta Pixie and the White Winged Collective Consciousness of Nine. So, please, please do come along and join. If you do join, if you answer all the questions, you'll just be automatically um, approved into the group. If you don't answer the questions, um, then um, my moderators and myself will be. Um, going through and if you've got nothing um, sort of uh, spiritual or truth related on your profile and you don't have a picture or you just have a picture of a dog or a flower and there you haven't answered any questions or agreed to the rules then you probably won't be accepted into the group the reason for that is it does seem that there are people that go around on the social media and it seems to be on book of the face variety worse than anywhere else and what they do is they will post something, either a video or they'll write something that they know is going to be trouble. It's going to be flagged and they do it deliberately to get you shut down. So I think that might have been why I lost my page, because that was happening a lot and I wasn't able to keep on top of it as quick as I was deleting people who were uh, mentioning the um, magic letter and suggesting that my material comes from the magic letter as quickly as I was deleting those comments and there were other comments as well they were um, rewriting them so I think that's probably why I lost the page the other possibility was that I did actually post one of uh, one of the tweets by Mr T and it was an hour or so after posting that that I lost the page so it was either because of the um, you know, hacking, or it was because I reposted Mr. T Mr. T. Now with the group, obviously it's easier to moderate. And I have got some lovely moderators helping me with this group to try to keep it as uh, 5D and high vibrational as we possibly can while still sharing 
and um, assisting and delivering information. So if you want to join, please do. If this one does go, then I probably won't make another and I will migrate over uh, elsewhere. And if you go onto my website, magentapixie.com, you'll see that I am already on some of the other more alternative platforms. And if this group goes, then I will most probably migrate over to MeWe and create a group on there instead. But we'll give this one a go. We'll see how it goes. Um, people have joined very, very quickly. And I think I have now, let's have a look, um, 3,000 members. So that's just in two days, which is um, nice. As I said, it's called Magenta Pixie and the White Wing Collective Consciousness of Nine. So I have never done a group before, so I'm just learning about it. But one of the things you can do is post an announcement and that, that announcement stays at the top of the page. I'm sure I don't need to teach you. I'm sure you all know exactly how it works. So what I did was I posted um, a request for questions, um, asking if, if anyone has any questions for either uh, myself or the nine to address in a video or in a post, please ask them. And this post has reached sort of every member, it's reached 3000 people. And I actually have 274 questions here. So obviously I'm not able to respond to all 274 today. I have actually managed three. Um, so I'm gonna go through the, those three and they're the first three that were asked, but I am going to dip into this every so, uh, every so often and have a look at the questions and, and see what I can get to. Um, but the three, the first three that were asked really, to be honest, needed the, um, the input from the nine rather than just my response and so I have asked the nine about these now I have asked the nine to speak briefly so that I could get through more questions so there's three of them here and as I've said to you before every question is um, something that you could simply uh, ask so many other questions from as in one question can create multiple other questions. They branch off into other questions, which is how I, I um, work with the nine in um, writing the books, because I will ask the nine a question. They respond with something I didn't necessarily know they were going to say. I'm surprised at their response and I want to know more. So I ask the nine, well, what did you mean by this? And then we're branching off into different directions. And that's kind of how the books get written. But um, Let's go to the questions. So the first one is, and thank you, by the way, to everyone who's joined my group, all 3000 members. Thank you so much. Special thank you to my moderators for doing such an amazing job in moderating <laughs> the forums and, and, and uh, um, allowing people in and, and checking everyone's profile and uh, keeping out people who might be there to, well, for nefarious reasons. So thank you so much to my moderators and thank you to everyone who asked a question. So this is the first one. I thought this one was really good. Supposedly there are two major timelines running at the same time. Many are holding on to one timeline in particular. This one is higher. Are we pulling people from the lower timeline to the higher or are the choices already made? So I think what this questioner is saying is if you're in a higher timeline because you're in that timeline and you exist within the consciousness of that timeline and the trajectory that you are on in your reality which includes your belief system your paradigm and everything that goes with it are you pulling people from a lower timeline a lower consciousness are you pulling them up into your timeline or are the choices already made meaning have those individuals already made the choice before they were born, which timeline to be on, which consciousness to experience, meaning no matter what you do, you can't pull them up into the higher timeline. I think that's what the questioner is asking. And I, I really think this question is fabulous. So presented this to the nine and this is their reply. For ease of explanation, you could say there were two major timelines. Whilst this is a convergence configuration, to give you the highest metaphoric understanding, we would say to you to visualize the two major timelines as two separate convergences. In fact, due to the collective consciousness of humanity's cohesive thought structures, 
The two timelines do actually present this way. We could refer to these as Armageddon NWO or and Paradise Ascension New Earth. It is correct that many hold onto different streams within these convergences, yet it is those who hold that frequency through cohesive thought, knowing, emotion, visualization and magic that create and anchor the convergences as timelines into actuality. This would be service to self and service to others or negative and positive polarized individuals. Those that hold on to a non-cohesive idea of reality and hold these transient unmanifest potentials are indeed pulled upwards into paradise or downwards into Armageddon, depending on receptivity and the magnetics they hold. So indeed, you are indeed pulling people from the lower timeline to the higher and vice versa, depending on the individual's makeup. Yet it is also true to say that the choices have already been made. This is the paradox of destiny and free will, which is a whole other subject. Suffice it to say, destiny and free will walk hand in hand. So that was the nine's response. I'm just going to go through that and analyze it somewhat briefly so we can get to the other two questions. So, um, for ease of explanation, you could say there were two major timelines. So the nine are agreeing with the questioner. Correct. There are two major timelines. Major as in multiple timelines, but two important ones, two bigger ones, if you will. Whilst this is a convergence configuration, so the nine are saying here that these are not track line, tram line, linear, as in a train track, lines that we are going from A to B, as in we are moving forward along one track. These are convergences. I've spoken about this before. Convergences being spiraling creations, circular spiraling, toroidal field type um, twister or uh, a whirlwind, that kind of configuration. And as the center of the convergence goes down into the whirlwind, it's, it's going into what we know in our universe as a black hole or a white hole. It's going into the central point, which is the zero point, um, central point of the convergence. And the, in that point is the core template. So the core template of the timeline, which is a entire reality. So it's not just a galaxy or a, or a series of planets. Or, or a series of galaxies, it's a reality structure. The galaxies mimic the reality structure. And in the center is the core energetic that pulses out. So it's a source point, it's source. You know, it's not actual the one and only source because there are multiple um, divisions of that one and only source. So the central point of that convergence is a division of source, but that source will be a emanation or a pulse point of a specific vibration of source, which involves every single vibration that could ever exist and that has ever existed and that will ever exist or that you could imagine and beyond your imagination. So we're taking two core points. So we're splitting that convergence into two. And the nine is saying to give you the highest metaphoric understanding, we would say to you to visualize these two major timelines. So these two separate train tracks as two separate convergences. So you've got two convergences, two source points, one being Armageddon NWO, the other being Paradise Ascension New Earth. Now they're just names that fit the frequency. Really what we have here is love and fear. Um, that, that's, that's the focus of those core convergences. So we've got service to others, service to self, positive and negative. We've got two opposing polarizations. And that, what, that is what happens in a polarized reality. So these convergences, going back in time, whilst there are always convergences as part of the reality structure, we would have been existing more on a tram line, train track type of timeline because we're in the earlier stages of that planetary um, experience. But right now we're coming towards the end of a planetary experience we're, or a dimensional experience. We're coming to the end of a dimensional, dimensional and planetary and cosmic and galactic experience 
and moving up to the next octave. So as we come to the central point, we're actually moving into that core point, that source point. That's where we're going energetically with our consciousness and with the planetary and galactic consciousness. We're moving into the core point. Um, that's where all the timelines move together and converge together and merge and superimpose within and on top of one another. And we move towards the core point. So it's like, which core point are we moving towards? The Armageddon NW, a service to self, or the Paradise Ascension New Earth service to others. We choose with our frequency which one we go to because we're magnetic and those core structures are, are magnetized and we magnetize ourselves to them within the consciousness. We become one with them. I have spoken about this before. So this is what the nine mean here. So they're saying, in fact, due to the collective consciousness of humanity's cohesive thought structures, the two timelines do actually present this way. And what they mean is um, an individual who holds a thought structure, just a random thought, creates a uh, response to that thought. If that is a random thought without any cohesion, without any focus, it's, it's, it goes out into the ether like a, a puff of smoke and releases some energy and then it sort of dissipates. But if someone holds a cohesive focus, which is mind, heart, emotion, frequency, vibration, thought, action, word, deed, lifestyle, the entire package, when that person becomes cohesive, they are emanating like um, a wave structure out from their being that isn't just like a puff of smoke that just dissipates. It's a, a, a huge pulsating um, sound wave and it's a wave of creation and it creates the convergence. It creates the timelines, the convergence of timelines, the core structure. So that core structure exists on its own as a magnetic pulse from source, but it exists because it's created by this collective of cohesive individuals. And by the time a planetary system or a galactic system gets to its completion, there should be a nice critical mass number of individuals who are creating that um, that central core point of that convergence. So that's exactly what is happening. Due to the collective consciousness of humanity's cohesive thought structures, two timelines. So we have service to self individuals who are cohesive. They are emanating a cohesive um, sound wave vibration. It's a very different vibration to the star seeds, if you will, the light workers, the truthers, the ascending ones, the aware ones. Um, whatever name you want to give them, the service to self individuals are emanating a sound wave. It's a different sound wave. It has a very different vibration, but it matches the core structure of the Armageddon NWO, service to self core reality, the negative polarization, and it's creating it. And then we have the star seeds, the light workers, the truthers, the wanderers, the aware individuals, the good people, the, the ones with open hearts the creative individuals, whatever name you want to give these individuals, they are emanating this beautiful pulse of light, much higher vibrational structure, creating the core. So what this does is go into the source point of creation and creates the, um, the division of source into individualized spinning, spiraling realities that, are, that the nine are calling convergences. Now I've spoken before um, saying that at the moment we are heading as a collective planet, we are heading for the um, the, the paradise um, convergence. That's where we're going, the ascension timeline. That's where the planet is going. That doesn't mean that the iron core structure, so that the, the paradise ascension new earth is the diamond core structure because the core point, the source point looks like a diamond. Um, and it has the frequency of a diamond and the service to self Armageddon NWO um, pulse is creating this, um, this, this different vibration, this service to self vibration that is an iron core and the vibrational frequencies as sound would match those 
structures. One is crystalline, so diamond, and the other is, is iron. That's because of the vibration that is being given off as magnetic um, reactions to one another. So that is what's happening. So we do have this iron core structure, but that's not the main one for the planet. We're on par for the diamond structure, the Ascension timeline. But these um, service to self individuals are able to try and attempt to hijack the diamond template and the um, Ascension timeline. And that's what they're doing. They're hijacking and they're putting their structures onto the diamond ascension timeline to try to pull it off course or change it. So there are many, many metaphors that you could use to explain what is going on. But what I can say is regarding the collective consciousness of humanity, the predominant timeline is the ascension timeline, which is why all these things are happening on our planet right now. Why anything that is a match to the iron core structure, to that negative polarity, isn't working. It's, it's working a, a bit, but it isn't sustaining because this isn't a, stain, a sustainable frequency. The iron core, the Armageddon NWO service to self pulse is a finite frequency because it's artificial. It's a replication of source rather than... Um, an emanation of source. So we, what we've done is we've split the source point into love and fear. Love is the true organic representation of source. Fear is um, a, a created uh, experience that one goes through in order to experience separation, to, to understand um, how, how far you can move away from source what it's like to be separated from source and move far away from source so that you know how to come back to it and what it's like when you come back to it. So it's, it's a chosen experience that physical souls go through. So that's why we've got these convergences. Now I have done other videos talking about this extensively. So, um, you know, if you want to know more about this, where I, I look in, in even more depth at these two convergences, then um, I will post the link to that video in the description below. So the nine say we could refer to these as Armageddon and WO, so that's Iron Core and Paradise Ascension New Earth Diamond Core. It is correct that many hold on to different streams within these convergences. So what's happening here is people are hanging on to a timeline and eventuality an outcome an emotion um, an event a series of events um, uh, that they're hanging on to um, a, a, an outcome and when I say hanging on it's it's as in um, desperately wanting it to happen as in it must happen and this is happening in the service to self and the service to others vibrations so we've got people in service to self this has got to happen we cannot risk this not happening it must happen. And they are literally fighting for their souls. And if you actually look at the campaign slogan for Mr. B, it's fighting for the souls of the nation. And from that perspective, that's exactly what they are doing because this is a finite structure. And so the only way that they can continue to give life to the iron core is to um, continue to hijack the diamond core structure, the ascension timeline and perpetuate the reality that they're existing within. Otherwise that reality isn't going to sustain but it isn't going to sustain and many of them are aware that it won't sustain but there are those that are holding on to this belief that they can um, transcend the organic that they can go above the source point god pulse particle and that they can sustain this is what they are wanting to do they're wanting to prove to themselves that they can go above the organic however that is not possible in this reality it may well be possible in some other reality somewhere but in this reality it's not a possibility it isn't in the um possibility for this uh, universal and galactic structure and the reason for that is this is a free will structure even though it doesn't seem like that right now in our reality this is a free will universe this is a free will galactic structure so when you have free will you have to have the opposing you have to have the polarity you have to have the duality but when critical mass is met for the choice of coming back to source then the catalyst of the darker polarity isn't needed anymore. 
So that's why it's finite. So it's not possible to go above that because critical mass has already been reached. Now, the only way they could do it, as I've said before, and I will link to the video where I talk about this, is to try to pull the critical mass down, but that's not happening. Everything they try to do to pull critical mass down, to prevent critical mass is actually creating yet more critical mass. It's all backfiring, as I've spoken about before. So individuals within the service to self and in the service to others, so within the service to others, holding on to different streams such as this is the date when the event will happen. This is the date when there'll be a flash of light. This is the date when the going back to the houses and staying in will end. This is the date when the Maxine will arrive and save us. Um, whatever it may be, there are people hanging on to events and eventualities in the belief system, making it cohesive or making it partly cohesive and creating these different streams within the convergences. So that, that's why it's a convergence. It contains multiple streams of, of focused reality playouts that are playing out individually for each person, family, country, state, et cetera, et cetera. It plays out wherever the focus of the cohesion is going, or it plays out as a mixed vibration if part of you is focused on one thing and, and another part of you is focused on something else. Um, so you, you, that's what it means by you're creating your own reality. And what that means is you are a magnetic being and you're attracting these magnetic um, uh, physical playouts, physical realities that match what you're putting out. Again, um, the nine have spoken about this at great length because it is the law of this universe. That's how it works, that polarity. So it's correct that many hold on to different streams within these convergences. Yet it is though those who hold that frequency through cohesive thought, knowing, emotion, visualization, and magic that create and anchor the convergences as timelines into actuality. So what you think, what you know, so it's not just about what you think, what you know. And that what, what, what I mean by know is you have insight into um, an event, an actuality or a potential, and you know what it is, what it means, and you know it will or won't, as the case may be, manifest. You hold knowing. This is this anchoring, this centralizing, core point holding of all that you are. So that's your knowing, your emotion. So your emotion is connected, as in this would be emotion that is. Um, uh, placed and understood and rapidly, if not instantaneously integrated, rather than emotion that's flying all over the place that you can't control. The emotion is controlling you. These are the individuals that are um, partly cohesive and are allowing um, timelines to anchor somewhat and dissipate. In order to be cohesive, your emotion will work for you as in um, a, a system of code within your vibrational field. So every emotion is there as a message. Every emotion is a living being that you work with, no matter what it may be. It's a guidance system, it's a compass. That's a cohesive individual who's working with that. Visualization, that which you visualize, as in what you allow to come to you as um, a presentation of an outside reality that is um, an extension of your own emotion or that which you're putting out, that which you want to create. It's one and the same thing, but it feels different to you. You're either receiving a picture or you are emanating a picture. You're doing this through the pineal gland and other systems within the brain. That's all part of the cohesive um, aspect that you are. And with, within the pineal gland, you have a crystalline um, organic technology that emanates these creations that's why you're creation, creating the core of the convergence as a collective so all the cohesive individuals are doing this together because they're all cohesive on the same thing they don't have to know each other they don't ever have to meet each other which is why i you know create my page and groups and why other people have created these groups and that's why the um censorship is going around and, and preventing them because <laughs> they know that these groups are creating cohesive structures and adding weight to the critical mass for ascension that they're trying to pull down um 
so yes i mean you can do this without a group you don't have to be a member of a social media group you're still part of that telepathic um union with others that are like you because it's all done through thought energy dreams when you create a group or a th or a thread or a page or or something on social media that just brings it in to a focus in the physical reality it doesn't mean that it's not there without the group but it focuses it more it basically it 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 um it gives weight to the cohesive energy and, and the nine speak here about magic let's imagine you have a magic wand and if you're on your own in your house you are not a member of a group you don't know any other cohesive um focused individuals but you are cohesive and you are focused then you have a magic wand with the strength of say i don't know number say say, say your magic wand can be um strength from zero to ten and your magic wand is the strength of five when you join um, a social media group and connect with other like-minded individuals depending on the energy of that group it will depend on the energy of the group it may be that that the energy of the group is the opposite from cohesive so you would have to um, be uh, very um, you, you'd have to uh, use your discernment when you enter any group but say this is a higher vibrational cohesive group even if there's individuals there learning things this would power up your magic wand to say number seven if you like so that's that's all it's doing it's 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 concentrating the ability to hold the cohesion which is why the censorship for one reason they don't want truth they don't want um, information to be released so it's an information war but a deeper reason and many of the individuals that are actually uh, policing the um, social media sites and taking things down they don't even know the real reason is because it's powering up the critical mass so um, that's another reason why these groups are being um, dispersed but because we exist within a magnetic t telepathy we're finding each other again and we will just continue to find each other that that's that's the energy um and if social media gets taken down and there was no internet we would still find each other we will find each other somehow because we're gravitating towards each other because we're magnetic beings it could happen in a, in, a, in a dream collaboration absolutely not not it could it's it's highly likely to uh, occur in a dream collaboration so going off track somewhat so cohesive thought knowing emotion visualization and magic so magic would mean um those who are actively taking the knowing the uh, visualization the thought and the emotion and they are ritualizing that magic in some way uh, in a um, conscious um uh, method so it could be a ritual, it could be working with crystals, it could be some kind of gathering. I mean, you know, it, it could be a multitude of things, but that also get, gives great power to the cohesive ability to manifest these, um, these core templates and convergences. So these um, different streams within these convergences um, are held through um, cohesive action and partly cohesive action by individuals who are partly cohesive. So you might have an individual who has great thought and emotion, but isn't particularly um, very focused with their visualization and they don't have knowing or, or vice versa. So they can still um, lend their energy into some um, timelines and actually affect the outcome of their reality to a point but then they're going to be getting chaos coming in as well so it's a mixed vibration and these are individuals who will have good things happen and then something will occur and everything will go bad and it, it will feel like um everything's crashed down and crashed about them and they have to build up their energy again this is simply because they're putting out a mixed vibration and there's nothing wrong with that that's all part of learning every soul who comes into physical um incarnation now it's different because we are right at the um, time of completion. So we have babies being born that, that know how to um, uh, stay cohesive uh, at a very young age. But um, last, I don't know, 100 years or so, um, there's no souls that would have come in and been able to remain cohesive from birth. I won't say none. There's 
a very, very minor few. But most souls would come in and they would be manifesting a mixed vibration. They would be cohesive in part or not at all and may even go into the complete opposite of cohesion and go into this random, um, uh, uncontrolled um, energy that they're giving out, especially if you're an indigo individual, you will have gone through that in order to learn how to be cohesive and how to move into focus. So these convergences would be service to self, negative, service to others, positive. And the individuals that are um, in the cohesive thought, knowing, emotion, visualization and magic are service to self individuals working their magic in a very different way and service to others individuals working their magic. So we're looking at, you know, darker fear um, and nefarious activity of, of um, extreme um, Difficult to use a word without saying something that um, could be uh, not coded. So I think you kind of know what I'm getting at. Um, and service to others, which is, you know, love, bliss, co compassion, higher vibrational frequency. Those that hold on to a non cohesive idea of reality. So this is someone who's holding on to um, a reality that doesn't have any cohesion, meaning they're in a state of somewhat confusion, either full confusion or part confusion or understanding reality to a point, but then confused beyond that or thinking that, that they have reality, thinking that they know reality, but really the reality they're holding on to is not um, a, an actual reflection of what is true. So there are multiple ways you could um, analyze that. Those that hold on to a non-cohesive idea of reality and hold these transient unmanifest potentials. So anyone holding on to a non-cohesive idea of reality, because it's non-cohesive, it cannot manifest. So these are the puffs of smoke that dissipate. Um, transient, so you know this reality could hold for a while but will dissipate or they simply sit as idea in the pre-manifest in the unmanifest and don't manifest at all um so these are individuals who um hold the ability to create these uh energies that can emanate as potential realities but they're not cohesive enough to actually add to the creation of this convergence, these individuals are indeed pulled upwards into paradise or downwards into Armageddon, depending on receptivity. So if an individual is um, unfocused with their reality, so is confused, but maybe partly confused or holds an idea of reality that's close to reality, but there is some distortion in there, but because they have some part of uh, their focus that, that is cohesive, but not all of it, they, they would hold receptivity. I mean, these people could be just good people, living good action, but haven't um, been able to cohesively move that good action into all their emotion, all their visualization, all their thoughts. So somewhere there is some um, uh, frequency that's matching that diamond core, that gives them receptivity. They will be pulled up by those that do hold cohesion. And this is what the nine mean when they say, you're a dragon rider, riding on a dragon, and people can jump on the back of your dragon. So if you're cohesive, if you're fully cohesive, you are riding the dragon. Those individuals who are partly cohesive or somewhat cohesive, a little bit cohesive, but still haven't quite come to a full cohesion, they're jumping on the back of your dragon. That's because you're pulling them up to your timelines. It's the same thing. So the person who asked this question, that's exactly what the nine mean when they say you have people on the back of your dragon. So yes, if you've got someone on the back of your dragon, you are taking them through the Stargate. They are not riding their own dragon through their own Stargate. You are riding your dragon through your Stargate or a Stargate and they are coming with you. You are taking them. And the other way of explaining that is the higher frequency that you hold and the cohesion that you hold, 
you are pulling the receptive ones up. That's absolutely happening all over the planet hugely right now, daily, minute by minute. That is totally happening. So, I mean, the question was here, um, are we pulling people from the lower timeline to the higher? And the answer to that is a resounding yes, we, we, we are doing that. Um, so the other thing the nine said were, was, or downwards. So if you've got an individual who doesn't have any receptivity to that higher frequency, um, does have a distorted cohesion that is more on the um, negative side and is perhaps um, living with, within nefarious negative action and, but isn't part of a group or isn't part of the, um, uh, the, the negative elite structure, um, but they are still um, somewhat negative in their action, but not fully, or, or negative in their thought and not in their action. I mean, it could be any multitude of, of um, different presentations. They are not receptive to the heart but they are susceptible to being pulled down into the Armageddon timeline um, and convergence. So it depends where the individual is and where their frequency is closest to, so they can be pulled down. Now it's more rare, that is much more rare for an individual to be pulled down. Most individuals are working upwards because most individuals who are not in the service to self structure are of a service to others polarization and have just potentially got lost, lost their way um, within that confusion. So that's more rare. There's way, way, way more individuals being pulled upwards to the uh, higher timeline. Um, so indeed you, you are pulling people from the lower timeline to the higher and vice versa, depending on the individual's makeup. Um, and the nine have said here, um, depending on the magnetics they hold. So the magnetics they hold is, um, you know, the, the magnetics is the frequency that you've created within your own auric field, your own toroidal field, based on your experiences, your thoughts, your actions, your emotions throughout more of a long-term um, reality basis. So this could be in this lifetime or in multiple lifetimes. So you will hold certain magnetic frequencies and um, patterns, um, ge geometric codes within your field. And if they are heavy and negative and traumatized, they are manifestations of trauma or, or have, have, are actions that are acted upon because of trauma, all those things would make you susceptible to the lower timeline. And those who are working through trauma, dealing with it, going through healing, um, all of those things, all of that sort of spiritual journey, if you will, self-help um, journey, that gives them receptivity to being pulled up into the higher timeline. So indeed, you are pulling people from the lower timeline to the higher and vice versa, depending on the individual's makeup. So that's the magnetics of the individual and their geometric structures that they hold within their frequency. Yet it is also true to say that the choices have already been made. This is the paradox of destiny and free will. So the choices have already been made. The choices were made before you were born. You chose to incarnate as service to others. You chose to incarnate as service to self. You chose to incarnate as someone who would waver between the two and become confused and create a mixed vibration and jump on the back of someone else's dragon and be carried through the Stargate. You made all these choices before you were born. But the nine say this is the paradox of destiny and free will, meaning you made the choices before you were born, you created the reality, but you can change those choices from the physical point of view. So you incarnated to experience service to others, but you can change that. Now, did you choose before you were born to incarnate and change it? Yes. Everything's decided before you were born. Everything you ever do, every choice you could ever make is decided before you were born. And at the same time, the choices are different and you can change the choices you made before you were born. They're both true. They're both true and they are complete um, contradictions to one another. That's the paradox. 
that's destiny and free will. It's like destiny means you don't have free will. Free will means there's no destiny. And it's both. They both work together. And that is a tough one to get your head around. I know that. The nine have spoken about this many times. I've done other videos on this. So this is why the nine say it's a whole other subject because you can talk about destiny and free will forever and ever and ever. And multiple spiritual teachers and philosophers have done so. And then the nine go on to say, suffice it to say, destiny and free will walk hand in hand. They are one, two sides of the same coin. So that's the response to that first um, question. And I'm going to quickly check to make sure we are still recording. And yes, we are. That's good. So we can go on to the next question. And that is, will one day people be able to thank the nine properly? Good question again. And this is the nine's response. This can be done now and indeed most properly, if you will. So I think that's the nine's attempt at humour, <laughs> or rather, I won't say attempt, they are very humorous. And I, I, I don't know if that necessarily comes across in the channelings that I present or even in the books, uh, but they are with me and always have been. So that, that's kind of a little bit of a humour there. This can be done now and indeed most properly, if you will. However, we feel that the asker of this quest is meaning thanking us in person in physical form. The answer to this is both yes and no. This is a long and lengthy response. And as you have asked us to respond briefly to these quests, let us just say that you, that those who are aware that we are you can thank us through you and the connection with your physical aspect. To those who are aware we are extraterrestrial, time-traveling, ultra-dimensional beings, we say that there are those of you who will be able to come into contact with higher density beings. This may not necessarily be as you are now or with us as the nine, yet for an even fewer number it may be so, if that aligns with their own destiny, free will pathways. So, will one day people be able to thank the nine properly uh, and and that's the response <laughs> let me just go through that so this can be done now meaning you can thank the nine now you can say thank you to the nine right now and indeed most properly so what the nine are meaning is <laughs> a, a kind of a, a double meaning on properly because um the quest the question was thank you properly meaning can we actually see you in real life and see see you as beings to say thank you to but the, the actual meaning of the word properly is to be proper, which is to be um, uh, of, of integrity, if you will, um, to, of, of um, upstanding um, action. So the nine are saying you can thank us with upstanding action, if you will. Um, so it's kind of a, a little joke. <laughs> um, however, we feel the asker of this question is meaning to thank us in person and physical form. And I agree, that is what I feel the, the asker is meaning. Are we going to meet you, the nine, one day to say thank you properly, meaning thank you in real life? And the answer is both yes and no. So the answer is yes and it's no. So they go on to say, this is a long and lengthy response. So if I wanted them to do the long and lengthy response, we're looking at a video, a long video, in order to really do this question justice. But I had asked them to respond briefly to these questions. As I said, I've got 278 and I very much doubt I'll be able to get through all of those. So that's why we're going, um, you know, uh, in a more brief response to them. Um, as you've asked us to respond briefly to these quests, let us just say that those who are aware that we are you can thank us through you and the connection with your physical aspects. So those who are aware that the nine are me, the nine are me as magenta, they can say thank you to the nine, to me and through me, because they're aware that the nine are me. Now, what that means could be different to each individual person, as in, well, they're magenta because they come through magenta. They're magenta's subconscious mind. They're magenta's future self. They are who magenta will become one day and not necessarily her now. Or they're magenta's family. And however you want to perceive that, those who are aware of who the nine are in, in relation to me 
as in because I am the conduit of them, because you can go outside of that as well and, and see the Niners not being me. You can also see the Niners being all guidance systems as emanations of source and as source. I mean, you can take that anywhere because they are non-physical multidimensional beings that individualize. Um, so they have their own um, uh, tiered system of what their emanations of, just like the physical sun is an emanation of the um, non-physical sun, the astral sun. It's the same thing with um, higher dimensional beings and, and consciousness structures right down to us. We are the emanation of source ourselves. We are the emanation of source. So anyone who knows that can thank the nine through me if they wanted to do that. Um, and the connection with my physical aspect. But to those who are aware, we are extraterrestrial. So they're extraterrestrial beings, time travelers, ultra dimensional beings, beings that are outside of this dimension or travel through multiple dimensions or are guardians of multi multiple dimensions. However, you want to actually see that them. Um, we say that there are those of you who will come into contact with higher density beings. So some of these individuals within the group that are aware of the nine as uh, ultra dimensional time traveling extraterrestrial beings are going to come into contact with higher density beings. The nine go on to say this may not necessarily be as you, meaning it may be in a future incarnation. It may be in the dream space as you are experiencing the um, alternate self, the, the quantum reality. Um, or, or with us as the nine, meaning you may meet beings that are not the, that don't present as the nine. They could be completely different beings, but they're the same consciousness structure, depending on where your own understanding is of the unity of the non-physical beings and how they're emanations of source or are the complete um, opposing energies from source. Where, where is your own personal understanding of what the nine are that will take you into an experience where you may may be able to say thank you to them and it's going to be different for each uh, individual so this may not necessarily be as you are now or with us as the nine yet for an even fewer number so they make it clear that this is even less people it may be so if that aligns with their own destiny free will pathways Meaning it may be so, meaning it will be as you are now, with the nine as we are. If that aligns with your destiny and your free will, meaning if you want to. So if you are somebody who is aware of who the nine are, you, you hold a multidimensional understanding of who and what they are in relation to yourself, in relation to me, in relation to source and in relation to everything that they are, and you decide you want to meet them and say thank you, then you may well do that. So that's the kind of yes, meaning, I mean, if, if the questioner is meaning, will you be able to meet an extraterrestrial being in physical form? Basically what the reply here is, a very few number will. That's kind of where I'm interpreting this, but that's at the moment and that could change. So it doesn't look at this point that um, we as a collective humanity are going to meet on a grand scale, higher dimensional extraterrestrial beings that are aspects of the nine. We may well meet other beings that are not aspects of the nine, but those who are able to understand what the nine are in that multidimensional presentation, a fewer number will. So that's what they're saying. And as they did explain to do this justice, um, this is a long and lengthy response. And it's difficult because when something is a long and lengthy response and the nine only give a briefer response and then I analyze that briefer response, there can be misunderstandings there because people will take their own um, opinion of what's been said and, and, and subscribe um, a, a belief system to it. And it's not exactly like somebody said to me earlier on my group, um, uh, you you said something or other when you said this are you are you sure um you meant this could it have been something else but the thing is i hadn't actually said that in in the video i i had said the something else so i that person had 
um, misinterpreted what I'd said or had heard what I'd said and just added their own interpretation, their own belief system onto what I said. It wasn't necessarily a misinterpretation, really. Um, it was it wasn't an, an exact interpretation, but didn't um, get the entire picture of what was being said. Because when you're talking metaphysically, th this happens when you when you're speaking in an esoteric metaphysical way. Everything is spoken through metaphor um, and everybody has different um, images in their mind to explain those metaphors. So it is open to misinterpretation. If you are in 3D or even somewhat in 4D, you are more likely to misinterpret what's being said. If you are a 5D being, you will get this because it's you don't even need words in that vibration. You will get what's being said if you are a 5D consciousness being. So that's the question two. And I, I, I responded to one more. So this is the last question. And the question is, will we still be able to enter the 5D, fifth dimension, even if we feel negative and have very down moments occasionally? It's very hard to keep the vibration high all the time leading up to the 21st of December. So the nine replied with, yes. There are many who exist in the fifth dimension now, even though they have these moments or occasions. If the negative feelings get to a certain point, which is different within each individual, as those with high light quotients have higher thresholds for instantaneous and almost instantaneous transmutation of negative emotion, then this can pull you down energetically out and away from the fifth dimension. However, this is not permanent, most especially with an individual who has already touched or experienced 5D. For once your human brain holds the configuration and coordinates for 5D, he or she can easily return to such. Regarding your December solstice, it is important not to see this date as a deadline, for that in itself changes the spontaneity of that moment and sets oneself up for the disappointments and the feelings that nothing happened, as such did occur during your 2012 December solstice, letting go of all dates while simultaneously being aware of dates is the consciousness to hold in order to gain maximum benefit of the energy of that date or time. This is indeed paradoxical or bilocational consciousness that we speak of. So this is two aspects to this response. Um, so I'll move that. So, Will we still be able to enter the fifth dimension even if we feel negative and have very down moments occasionally? And the answer to that is yes, you will. You will be able to enter the fifth dimension even if you feel negative and have very down moments occasionally. The nine go on to explain, there are many who exist in the fifth dimension now, even though they have these moments or occasions. So there are people out there feeling very down sometimes, feeling really negative sometimes, but they are 5D individuals. So yes, yes, yes. Do not be cross with yourself and beat yourself up if you have an off day or an off week or even an off month where you're feeling terrible, especially now in this 2020 energy that we are in. If the negative feelings get to a certain point, which is different within each individual, so that the, the certain point the individual gets to is different within each individual, that, that threshold. Those with high light quotients have higher thresholds for instantaneous and almost instantaneous transmutation of negative emotion. So if you have a high light quotient, you can be, um, I think what this means is, if you have a high light quotient, you can feel depressed and down and negative for longer without it pulling you down energetically because the light quotient is higher than the negative feeling. So if you have a high light quotient and an open heart and a high disposition and a typical 5D star seed, you can be pulled down um, 
you can you you can be pulled down um, less than other people, which is really great because this is what's happening in 2020. If you look at the whole 2020 energy and the attempted planetary takeover and the attempt on humans and, and what is being done to us on this planet, the star seeds are still holding the fifth dimensional vibration, even though they are also in that human um, collective that is under A-T-T-A-C-K, if you will, because they have high light quotients to carry them through, which gives them stamina. It gives them the ability to hold and experience a negative emotion, feel down, but not pull them from 5D. They can still be in 5D. That, that, that's why the 5D energy is being held. Nothing's pulling these star seeds down, even though they may have a bad day. They may feel terrible for a while. They are not being pulled out of 5D. If they were, we wouldn't be manifesting the diamond core. We wouldn't be in, on an ascension pathway, but we are because the individuals are doing this. So this is a really, really good question and a really, really topical question for now. So if the negative feelings get to a certain point, so if you get to a certain point with these negative feelings, that certain point being your threshold, which is different for each individual. If you've got high light quotient, your threshold will be further it will take a lot more um, negative feeling to get to your threshold because you've got so much light. I hope that sort of um, is understood. When you do get to this certain point, this threshold, then this can pull you down energetically out and away from 5D. So if you have a low threshold and not a very high light quotient, um, you could be um, pulled out of 5D pretty quickly and pretty easily and be back in 3D. If you have a highlight quote and you're a star seed, you've been working on yourself, which is why the higher dimensional beings have been saying for years and years and years, work on yourself, work on yourself, work on yourself. This is why keeping the heart open, working with the trauma, living in compassion, living in love and light, meditation, yoga, raw high vibrational foods i mean this is why we've had this advice for so long it hasn't just been some fluffy bunny thought or some pretty little thing to, to think about it's because of this it's because you are building a light quotient which is a shield it is a shield it is a shield that's keeping you anchored in 5D, no matter what's going on on the physical level, no matter what's going on in 2020, no matter how bad the attempted planetary takeover is and the ATT, ACK against humanity, you have a shield. And that's your light quotient. However, if you haven't been working on that and you haven't been working on this light quotient for years and you're, you're new to all this and, and your light quotient isn't so high, and I say new to all this, there, there are some new individuals have gone whoosh, straight up with their light quotient and they hold the shield. They have gone from not being awake to right up there with their light quotient. So it's nothing to do with how newly awakened you are, because some people have been on a spiritual path for years and years and years and years and still haven't really built a very high light quotient. They're, they have all the understanding here, um, psychologically and intellectually, but they haven't built the light quotient within. So it's really nothing to do with how long you have been awake. Um, some newly awakened individuals are new to this and haven't built the light quotient, but that's not anything to do with um, this. I was just sort of speaking generally there. So if you are someone who hasn't got a high level of light quote and you are easily brought down, then this can pull you down energetically out and away from 5D because when you get to that threshold, that point of experiencing negative feelings for so long, um, it's like, that's enough, you know, enough, enough is enough. I, I, can't, I can't experience this any longer. And this can pull you out and away from 5D. So that is happening, that is happening to some of the light workers, but you also have this other bunch of light workers who are holding that high vibration. And also remember, I've said this in another um, video, you don't have to stay in high vibrational states the whole time, because if you're pulled down for 24 hours or a week or a month or whatever, the others are there. 
and then you come back up and let them <laughs> be pulled down if they need to be you know we we have enough people holding critical mass that it's okay for some of us to occasionally have an off day which is understandable in 2020 given what's going on it's also understandable for individuals to be extremely euphoric right now, extremely excited and extremely happy. And if you have awareness through your cohesion and your insight and your knowing, you will be feeling like that because you will see what's coming. You will know what's going on behind the scenes and you will see what is coming. And whilst there is a um, not such a good side to it because of all the um purging and the the um the shifting and the changing and the awakening and all the souls that have to go through that what is coming is better than it's ever been on this planet before since the beginning of our known history so those who can see that will be in a place predominantly of bliss euphoria and high um emotion which is why they're navigating through this situation so well and are not coming into contact with these um, more uh, A T T A C K S S um, that are being conducted across the planet right now. So what the nine go on to say is, yes, you can be pulled down energetically out and away from 5D if this threshold is met um, by the amount of time you are in these negative feelings. However, this is not permanent. This is what I'm saying about coming back up. This is not permanent. Most especially with an individual who's already touched or experienced the fifth dimension. So if you've already experienced it, once your human brain holds the configuration and the coordinates for the fifth dimension, he or she can easily return to such because it's like, you know, muscle memory when you, um, I don't know, say you're a ballet dancer and you learn all these ballet dances and then you stop doing ballet for 30 years and then you go back to ballet and instantly your leg moves in the right way or your arms move in the right way. And, and, and it's not long before your body remembers how to do those moves and your body easily um, goes into that, that movement, the, 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 mus the memory in muscles and it's not just about movement, muscle holds memory of all kinds. Um, so the human brain has a similar thing. I know it's not a muscle in the same way as a muscle in your body, but it's a memory structure. So the actual plasticity in the brain goes into a formation like a muscle in, in the leg or in the arm. And when you come away from that formation, that formation kind of shuts down and, and the brain doesn't hold that that coordination, that plasticity, then you come back to it. The brain remembers the pathway, remembers the plasticity and it instantly uh, reconfigures itself back again. Not being a neuroscientist, I'm probably not saying the right thing here, but I hope you understand what I mean. Um, once you've touched 5D, your brain will remember, your, your, your whole energetic remembers. So it's not permanent, it's like riding a bike. Once you've learned to ride a bike, you always remember how to ride a bike, that, that sort of thing. So it, the nine go on to say, um, your human brain holds the configuration and coordinates for the fifth dimension and he or she can easily return to such. So this is why the collective consciousness of the star seeds can work together as a team, holding that fifth dimensional critical mass, powering up the energy for that diamond core, the Ascension timeline, the Paradise timeline, filtering that into our whole reality. And if you have an off day, there are other star seeds up there holding that light and they may have an off day next week and you'll be the one holding the light. We're a team. We are a team. And that's why I made the page on social media, on the book of the, of the face variety. And I've now done the same with the group and why we will always find each other if, if the censorship, um, you know, shuts us down we will find each other again even if the internet goes down we will find each other again we will always find each other we are a family we are a family of light we love each other this is the thing it's not just some um airy fairy thing to say we really love each other those that hold the frequency i'm talking about this higher vibrational frequency when you recognize that in someone else you will instantly love that person it sounds crazy to those who don't understand this, 
but you will recognize yourself in that person and you will be in a situation of self-love. You already love yourself because you've worked in that way. So when you meet someone else who holds that same configuration, you will love them. They're a soul brother. They're a soul sister. That's that's why people in this um, vibrational state, people in this movement refer to one another as the family of life, soul family, soul brother, soul sister. That's why we love each other. And that's why we'll always find each other. Even if we don't find each other for real in real life, there will be ways we will connect. If we can't connect in the physical, it'll be done in the astral. It'll be done in the dream space telepathically. We are, we are a oneness. We are a unity. That's what we are already. It's like we don't have to wait to experience unification. It's there now for the star seeds, and they can all feel it. So going on to the next part of the question, regarding your December solstice, it's important not to see this date as a deadline, for that in itself changes the spontaneity of the moment. So I think what the nine are saying here is, if you're thinking of December the 21st, so the lady who asked the question, or, or um, man, I, I, I think it was a lady, will you, but yeah, will we still be able to enter 5D even if we feel negative and have very down moments? It's hard to keep the vibration high all the time leading up to the 21st. So I'm not 100% what, sure what she meant by that, but I think what she might have meant is, um, it's okay because we won't need to try to keep our vibration high anymore after the 21st because something will happen on the 21st and we'll be in some um, fifth dimensional paradise kind of reality. But up to the 21st, we have to keep our vibration high and work at it. I think that's what she may have meant. She may not have meant that. She may have meant, meant something else. Um, but obviously that, that way of thinking is... Um, doing what I was saying earlier about creating, holding a reality structure and having a belief system and holding that reality structure as a cohesive um, uh, creation and then manifesting it and for it not to match the actual um, organic reality structure and that's not matching it. That's, that's not how it is. You don't have to sort of work really hard to keep your vibration high. And come the 21st, oh, sigh of relief, we're in the light. It, it, it's not like that. The, the, no reality is like that because everything's happening now. We have to bring everything back to the now, regardless of what's occurring in the dates. We need to be in the 21st now. It's, it's not a case of on the 21st of December, some huge thing is going to happen. It may well, I'm not saying it's not going to, there may, may well be a cosmic event uh, that's massive. Uh, I mean, absolutely that isn't how we hold the vibration um, by seeing it as a deadline, as in a good deadline or a bad deadline. Either way, we've got to try really hard to keep our vibration up and then on the 21st we can relax. Um, she, the person may have actually meant the reason why it's hard to keep our vibration high is because everything is so fast moving leading up to the 21st. So everything is um, so intense. And so it's difficult to keep your vibration high. She may have meant that. Either way, whatever the, the questioner is meaning, she's seeing the 21st as, as some kind of deadline. And that's, that's not what the nine are saying to do here. Your December solstice, it's important not to see it as a deadline because if you do, it changes the spontaneity of the moment. So the 21st of December needs to be spontaneous for the event or the energy or whatever it is, the stargate to occur. It needs to be spontaneous, as in we're not supposed to know what it is. It just happens organically. So it's like, wow, that was unexpected. Wow, that's organic. So we need, we need to keep the spontaneity of that energy and not focus on it as a deadline because if we focus on it as a deadline, we place a false screen over the 21st of December. We place a false screen on it and we create a false energy and that can change the way the spontaneity works. The spontaneity may not work, it may, it may create something else. We need to leave the 21st of December to be as organic as we possibly can. And we can do that collectively, we can do that individually. 
So it sets oneself up for the disappointments, as in on the 21st, you're waiting for this big flash of light, crash of thunder, angels coming down from the heavens, um, some cosmic shift or whatever, whatever, some ex big experience, whatever it is, if the 21st comes and goes and feels like a normal day, then you are you're, you set yourself up for disappointment and feelings that nothing happened because this did happen after the December solstice 20, 2012. So many people were like, oh, so it's the 22nd of December, nothing happened then. And the nine, and I know other teachers were the same, made it quite clear that this was not a deadline. This was an energetic and that all sorts of things could occur to match that energetic. And so to actually say on the 22nd of December, oh, nothing happened then on the 21st, you've missed the point completely. And it's not, not, <laughs> it's not a criticism. It means that you interpreted the 21st of December, 2012 in a third dimensional sense. Now it's the same thing now. Yes, it's a different convergence. It's a different energy. Something is occurring around this time period for sure. That's cosmically, um, galactically, within our own cells, the cellular, the crystalline, all of those things that we've talked about. But as the nine say, this is a spontaneous event and we don't want to put this deadline on it. And then on the 22nd, wake up and say, oh, nothing happened. I'll still feel the same. What happened? That, that, that you know, where, where's the flash of light then? Where was the event? You've missed the point if you feel that way on the 22nd and you've interpreted the 21st of December third dimensionally. This is a multi-dimensional event horizon how that manifests on the physical, there are multiple ways because this is a convergence. It's not one timeline, it's a convergence. So it's really important to know this. Letting go of all dates. So let go of all dates. Don't think about the dates. Forget the 21st of December, literally. Forget the dates. You must do that one thing. And then be aware of the dates. 21st of December, I'm aware of that date. Astrological movements, full moons, sabbats, esbats, we're aware of these dates. Ceremonies, we're aware of these dates. So let go of the dates completely. Let go of the 21st of December, completely let go. Be aware of the 21st of December. Be aware of it. You are doing both. If you're only aware of it and you're not letting it go, you're making it a deadline. If you let it go completely and you're not aware of it at all, well, that might still be quite good actually because you'll be riding the energy, but then you're, you're not necessarily aware of the, um, the way the energies move in our calendar. So it's good to hold both. That's, that's the paradox. That's the paradox here. Letting go of all dates to what, while simultaneously being aware of dates is the consciousness to hold. So you do both. In order to gain maximum benefit of the energy of that date or time. So if you're letting it go and not, and not being aware of it, that's fairly good as well, because you're in flow. If you are aware of it, but not letting it go, well, that's good too, because you're aware of it, but you could set it up as a deadline. But you do both. You let it go, let it go completely. And if you're also aware of it, this gives you maximum benefit of the energy of that date or time because you are aware of the physical 3D linear Gregorian calendar counting system that we use and the cycles of the moon and all of the other um, times and dates that occur, the, um, the equinoxes, all of those things but you are also letting go and you're in the now moment. This allows you to gain maximum benefit of the energy of that date. And the nine say, this is indeed paradoxical or bilocational consciousness because you are holding two things that are seemingly opposing. Let go of dates and be aware of dates. You're doing two things that appear to be contradictory. 
this is paradoxical consciousness or the nine also call this bilocational consciousness the reason for that is you are locating your thoughts in two places at once now bilocational consciousness of mind of thought is the precursor to physical bilocation the next step is astral bilocation so you can be in two places at once in two dreams at once you can have two dream bodies and be dreaming two dreams at the same time or be aware that you are awake and asleep so you're aware of your physical body and of your dream body that's bilocational the next step to that is actual physical bilocation which is way further down the line um, when we are fully fifth dimensional but that is our future that is our future now that's also our future within the um iron core nwo on armageddon timeline through transhumanism and artificial intelligence it's our future organically through ascension and these are the two convergences that we have right now so these three questions three very different questions all kind of merged together and um gave up gave a, a, a good picture of um the explanation of reality right now by going through just three very brief responses from the nine to these very three um small questions that were posted on my group so um so that's it yeah thank you so much for listening to that and um i will be back with more and as i said i have got now 276 questions and now I've got 273 because I've responded to three of them. So, but it's great. I have a resource there. So if I do feel I want to, you know, dip into these questions, have a look, uh, then they're there. So I'm very pleased about that. And I will copy and paste them all just in case the, uh, the group does miraculously disappear into the ethers of cyberspace after a little bit of censorship. Um, these things happen. And again, if you do have an online group, don't be too attached to it. It's nice to be attached to it energetically and emotionally, but don't be so attached to it that you're in resistance to losing it. Because when I lost my page, people were saying to me, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Oh, and, you know, are, are you really upset? And, and yeah, I was disappointed, but I wasn't upset because I knew that it was a possibility. So I prepared myself. And I felt as long as this group, as long as this page is here, it's here. If it goes, it goes. I don't want to be caught up in allowing my emotions to be caught up in these things that occur. I'm not saying I don't ever feel upset or distressed or, or disappointed or really, really, really hurt. Of course I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course I do. But I try to save those emotions for the really big times when it's kind of justified to me anyway so i hope that makes sense anyway thank you so much for listening everyone and um please do join my group if you are on that particular social media platform if not you can find me on all the other places listed on my website and i will put the link to um, my website in the description and a link to the video i mentioned in in the description as well i'll put a link to the uh book of the face variety social media group in the description as well so Thank you very much for listening. Love you all. See you all again. Bye.